have just dialed in live to the center of the grilling universe. That's right, my brothers. It's red, hot, and ready. And Teddy, it's about soul food. It's about the food that makes you come back from where you were when you didn't want to be there. It's what's going to make you feel good. You wake up in the morning and feel poorly, poorly, I say, and they bring you back. They give you the food. They give you the strength. And we're going to take that walk together, my friend, down that culinary road of salvation. Yeah. Want to win major brownie points with your girlfriends, boys? It is so simple. Take care of her while she's sick. Today I'll be in the backyard showing you how to mix up some cures for the common cold. And my brothers, when you found that dark place that you don't want to be, and you're hungry and you need some food for your soul, travel that cold road to righteousness. Come on, buddy. Okay guys, it's soul food, and listen, before you start picking that fro, the thing is, it's not that kind of soul food, okay? The chitlins and the collard greens are out there. What we got in here is stuff to make our soul feel good, okay? And what makes the soul feel better than wheat bread? That's right, wheat bread. Okay, this doesn't sound half as bad as poo bread, for instance. Actually, <laughs> okay. What I meant to say, it doesn't taste half as bad as poo bread, but it doesn't taste half as bad as wheat bread sounds either, okay? Wheat bread. Oh. Let's get down with this. This is gonna be served with our soup. We got some cedar plank roasted barbecued soup action going on. There's gonna be some squash, there's gonna be some of this stuff, okay? But that's later on, so you know, think about what we're doing now, okay? Come on, come on, come on, my, come on, my children. Into the bowl, into the bowl. There we are, out of the bowl, into the bowl, out of the bowl, out of the bowl. Aha, gotcha. Okay, we got a little bit of salt here. That's about a teaspoon of salt. Actually, it's about a quarter teaspoon of salt. And we got a tablespoon and a half of baking soda. Okay, and we got about half a tablespoon of cinnamon. Because we all know wheats lacks the cinnamon. Man, the universe is an incredibly complex place. I thought so. Okay, we're gonna whisk this around. Whisk all our dry ingredients together. This is a quick bread we're making, okay? So it shouldn't be taking this long. But actually what quick bread means is that there is no yeast involved, so it leavens very quickly. You don't have to let it rise up, and you know, fall down, rise up, that whole sort of shtick, right? And when you're not feeling too good, when you're feeling kind of poorly, you want something that's gonna be made fast. If your girlfriend won't make it for you, you can do this in a pinch. You can come in between yakking, and man, you can have this done before you have to upchuck again, right? Okay, we got that stuff in there. That was uh, molasses. That was a half a cup. Whisking it in with an egg. Get kind of an interesting looking consistency happening. We've got a quarter cup of oil. That's just going to lube up the bread a bit, make it slide down the pipe that's been overly used that morning as it is. Okay, so that was lemon zest. We had a full teaspoon of grated lemon zest, okay? And now what we got is we got brown sugar. Quarter cup of brown sugar. That's right. How much? Quarter cup. Thank you. Can I have a witness? Quarter cup. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Now we're dumping our dry ingredients in, whipping them in very slowly. There we go. Whisk that around. Ooh, don't this look good, huh? One thing I forgot, I am such a... So, I'm gonna add the milk in now. It's not too late, I don't think, but if it is, well, it doesn't matter. You're sick, you're not gonna do it a second time, are you? There we go. Done. What we wanna do now, so we're gonna add a little bit of oil. This is just regular vegetable oil into our nonstick pan here, okay? I'm gonna grease up two of them because I obviously have no idea how much this is gonna fit. I mean, there's no way that actually this is gonna fit in two pans. But I'm gonna grease the other one up because it feels so good. Okay, into the pan that goes. Okay, this is good, but don't worry about the stuff on your fingers. You just wipe it right into the pan, right? And yeah, no one part of this is better than the other part. Huh, what's the matter? Not feeling so good? No? That's too bad. Well, look, when we come back, we're gonna be throwing this on. We'll be greasing up the skidway for further culinary soul food treats, okay? So y'all come back now. 
What's worse than a cranky girlfriend? A cranky girlfriend with a cold. If your girlfriend is sick and you're seriously feeling the brunt of her pain, then why not take matters into your own hands? It doesn't take much to whip up a concoction to help her feel better. When she does, she'll be more than willing to make up for lost time. I'm going to show you how to get your girlfriend back on track and earn some extra brownie points. Hey guys, how you doing? You know, when I'm feeling a little bit poorly, you know what I like to do? I like to have a little bit of pork, you know what I'm saying? Okay, by this I mean pork loin rib fangs, okay? This is, a, this is a pork loin on the rib. These are amazingly tasty, tender treats that can't be beat. Oh, yeah. I may be John, baby. Okay, so we got four of these puppies. They're going into the bowl. But pork needs a little something something with it, doesn't it? Especially when you're feeling a little something something bad, okay? Right, and what this means is, in this case, tomatoes. You're gonna squeeze two cans, two whole cans of whole tomatoes with juice, okay? First I'll dump the juice in, dump in the juice. Okay, squeeze that in there. There's lots of vitamin C in these babies, right? These tomatoes are just jam-packed full of vitamin C and acid. And that's really good when you're feeling poorly, acid things, remember that. Okay. Got a little garlic. Actually, garlic here is the wonder drug, right? I used to have a girlfriend, when she had yeast infection, she'd shove a clove up there. <laughs> actually, it worked really well for her. You know, she'd shove it up there, and uh, actually within 24 to 48 hours, no more yeast infection, boom, back into business. I was feeling much better as well, actually. And uh, we're gonna add a little bit of honey here, okay? Actually, I didn't tell you what the last things I put in there were. It was a quarter cup of uh, brown sugar, a tablespoon of paprika, now I'm putting a quarter cup of honey in there. Okay, this is going to sweeten these babies up, you know? It's also good for your throat. If you've got a bad throat, it's going to soothe the tube, you know what I'm saying? We've got a little bit of chipotle pepper puree. This is a smoked jalapeno pepper and a smoked over jalapeno wood. The spice and the heat is going to draw out a lot of sweat out of you. You know, you're going to sweat the demon out of you, right? You're going to sweat it out of you. You're going to sweat it. You're going to sweat. And you're going to walk down that path and you're going to say, Yay, though I had spice. And yay, though I had pork. I feel better. I trusted. I trusted. I was taken out of the dark. Now I'm in the light. Now I'm in the dark. Now I'm in the light. Now I'm making the light. And we got the pork. And we're going to add a little bit of this uh, red wine vinegar to this now. Straight in, okay? Now we just got to mix it up a little bit. I feel a little strange. Okay, mix it up. There's our marinade. Okay, we're gonna let these puppies sit for about an hour and a half or so, and then get right on to our uh, Indian pudding, okay? Hey, Dean, you got a light? See. Now that's a crack pipe. You got a light? <laughs> oh, okay. Wrong okay. Bar. Okay. <laughs> okay, there we are. Okay, we got four cups of milk here, right? I'm just gonna dump that straight in. Be very careful. Milk comes from cows. We got a little, ooh, that's nice, that's ginger. Yeah, I'm mashing it up with my finger, otherwise it's gonna cause lumps to float on top of our milk. It's, uh, mm, yeah, a little bit of sugar. Quarter cup of sugar there. We got about a teaspoon of salt. The salt brings out the flavor of the sugar and all the other flavors as well. So even though you're making a dessert kind of thing, salt is okay and is necessary. But don't use iodized salt, okay? Because that's a bad trip. Okay, we got some molasses there, which apparently Indians invented because they were spending so much time vacationing in Barbados. Ouch. Okay, let's stir this up. We got another couple ingredients here we're gonna add in. It's coming up to a high enough temperature now, just below a simmer. Adding some butter in. Had I put that in earlier, it would have separated too much. As soon as this just melts down a little bit, I'm gonna toss in this uh, cornmeal which actually is the ground dried corn kernels. Indians really did invent this. Okay, we're very slowly stirring in the cornmeal here. And this is about half a cup. Okay, I'm gonna keep stirring this for a few more minutes because it's gonna take a little while for the cornmeal to break down. It's a little bit dry in there, right? But when we come back, I'm gonna be pouring our pudding on the grill. I bet you haven't done that before. 
All right, we're back and we're ready to cure your girlfriend's cold. Now, when you guys are sick, it just seems like the whole world knows, but when your girl is sick, she probably doesn't tell you right away, and by the time you find out, she's cranky and you need to take immediate action. So today we're gonna show you a couple little remedies that are quick and easy and are bound to make her feel better. The first one is my grandmother's recipe, and what it involves is five cups of boiling water in a large pot over the stove. And what you wanna add to that, take a handful of crushed sage leaves. It gives it a really, really nice aroma. You're gonna try and crush it up as much as you can. Mmm, smell that. That's great. And next you're gonna add about five tablespoons of honey. It's really great, really soothing for your throat. And that also has a great aroma. And these two things mixed together give a really nice infusion of aromas. There we go. Mmm, that smells great. And the next thing that we're gonna add is some lemon. Now, you can do a little variation on the lemon here. You can either add a couple tablespoons of lemon juice or you can add a whole lemon. Now, what you can do is roll it out to get the juices flowing here and then cut it in half once. Just put a couple slices in there to help get the juices going. And it's easier to squeeze the juice out that way. There, now squeeze the juice out a little bit to get it going and then just drop it in there. Oh, mm, that smells great. Now what I do when it's boiling really nicely and has a really nice aroma coming from it is I take a towel, put it over my head and breathe in the nice aroma. Mm, and the steam really helps to clean your passageways out. Mm. Another thing that you can do is have a hot toddy because when you're feeling sick, hey, alcohol always helps. Now, what a hot toddy is, is you just boil a cup of water, like we've done here, over the stove, pour it in a nice big glass, Ooh, top it up, and then next you add about a shot full of rum, which is gonna make you feel totally better, and you wanna top that off with a nice heaping teaspoon of sugar. Sweetens the pot a little bit. I'm gonna add a little bit more. Mmm. That smells great, and that's just the thing to keep her nice and warm and toasty in bed. And another thing you can do is bring her some extra warm blankets or, you know, a heating pad or a hot water bottle. And if her tummy's not feeling so well, you could just bring her some dry toast and some ginger ale. I know it doesn't sound very exciting, but you're not trying to impress her here. You're trying to make her feel better. But you know what? This is gonna be extra brownie points, boys. So stick around, because when we come back, I'm gonna show you how to avoid getting her cold. It's all about fun, your inner caveman here on Red Hot and Ready. All right, boys, we're back helping your girlfriend cure her cold. We've warmed her tummy up with a nice little hot toddy, and we've cleared her passageways with a nice lemon steam. But one of the most important things to remember is not to get sick yourself at any cost. Now, you always want to make sure that you wash your hands after any contact. And I know that it might turn you on a little bit when you think about slathering some menthol rub over her naked skin, but you know what? It's not worth it. Put yourself in her position. You don't want to be sick too. So boys, let her get a little sleep because who knows, you may be redeeming those brownie points as early as tomorrow. Hey guys, we got our Indian pudding. You'll be happy to know that no Indians were actually harmed in the making of this pudding. Let's check out our wheat bread. Oh man, this is nice. This has been in here for about 35 minutes, cooking in indirect heat, creating an overall temperature inside the barbecue of about 350 degrees. And this is just perfect. We wouldn't want to leave this any longer, otherwise it would dry out. I think we should check this out. But first, let's throw our Indian pudding onto the grill. We poured it from the pot into this non-stick baking tray, and we're gonna cook it in the same method we just cooked the wheat bread. Let's cover it over, and cook it just the same way as the last one. Put it on the side you've turned off. We're gonna close this down. That's gonna be about half an hour. We can take it out, take the lid off. It's gonna be fantastic. Now let's take a look at this. Pop this out. Look at that. The great thing about this is just not only weedy, but it's bready as well. It's not only weedy, it's bready. You got that? Mmm. 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 That's good. 
Wish we got us here to taste this. Let's make our soup to go with the wheat bread. This is very simple, okay? I'm gonna slice this beautiful sweet mama squash. I don't think this is a sweet mama squash, so suffice to call it squash, okay? Take a spoon. Take the seeds out. We don't want that in our soup, right? We're gonna do a very interesting technique. It's called planking. <laughs> Normally you'd plank a salmon or some kind of fish, right? It involves putting your vegetables or fish or whatever you have onto a soaked cedar plank. We're gonna throw that directly onto the fire and it's gonna just create a really nice sort of woody flavor in our vegetables. So we got our soaked plank here. It doesn't look like cedar. Put our veg on there. Can put some garlic on as well. Cut the tops off. And we're also gonna do a little bit of onion with this. All these things are just fantastic for a cold, you know? When you're feeling poorly, this is what's gonna do it for you. Trust me. Don't do that. A little bit of oil. It's inside the garlic. Doesn't matter what kind of oil you use. A little bit of coarse sea salt. Open this baby up. And we're gonna toss this right in. Be careful with your fingers, okay, when lowering this. Done. Okay. Okay, now we're gonna clean this mess. Hey, that, that's good enough. <laughs> Let's start our soup, guys. Got a pot, we got heat. Half the battle's won, right? Add a little bit of oil to this pot. This is gonna heat up very quickly. We've got super barbecue. Well, don't look at me like that, it is. We got some celery, two and a half stalks of celery. Got a couple of carrots, we toss them in there. Some coarse salt, right? To bring those flavors out. A little bit of black pepper. This is gonna cure what ails you, I tell you, man. Time for your examination. <laughs> Let's take our vegetables off here that have been beautifully planked. Put them down here, we're gonna scoop the rest out. We're gonna add it to our little sauteing mirepoix, as they say in French. And you thought you weren't gonna learn anything. I double glove for John. Okay, gonna scoop out these babies. Just toss it into the mix. You're not feeling too good. Let's not take our time on this, right? Let's just power right through it. Yeah. We got a little bit of garlic here too. We've roasted here. I'm gonna cut it in half. This is easy. Just squeeze it right out there, see? Sort of like popping a big zit on your ass. Drop your pants. Okay, we got some onion. It's the roasted onion we did. Let's just stir this up a bit. Mm. Soup's on, boys. Actually, I'm just pulling your leg here. We gotta add some stock to this. Let it cook up for a bit. So that's two cups of stock. We're gonna lower this down in temperature. Gonna throw a lid on it. Put a lid on it, will ya? Okay, guys, and when we come back, we're gonna puree up this soup because you know it's gonna feel good. We're gonna take off the Indian pudding. We're gonna throw the chops on. Hey, and if you're feeling well enough, we just might go to work tomorrow. Okay, we're going over here. We're going to the blender, right? This is the food processor. This is where we process our foods. Straight in. This stuff looks great. All the vegetables are broken down nicely. I'm gonna throw this puppy on top. Okay, we're just gonna let this run for a couple minutes. Get it nice and pureed. That's looking great. Let me show you. Mm-mm. My mother never made soup like that. Man, this stuff is smoking. Mm, feeling better already. This is the portion on a program where I eat soup. Look at that. Look at, look at that texture. It's beautiful. Just a little bit thinner than a puree. Mm. That is good soup. Okay. I think it's about time for us to take our uh, Indian spoon bread off. Let's take a look at this. Hmm, just a second. Okay. 
That is really good. There's our spoon bread. Check it out. See, it's still a little bit gooey, right? If you like it gooey, now's the time to eat. However, if you let this cool down, it's going to come to a nice sort of thick, dense consistency. And that's what we want. It doesn't have to be hot. Cold is fine, okay? It's still going to do the comforting job that it needs to do. Yeah. And we got some pork chops here. We're going to take a brush here and try not to make too much of a mess, right? Of course, you're sick. Your girlfriend will clean it up for you. Woman's work is never done, huh? <laughs> brush this with a little oil. Straight on. Oh, yeah. The pig's escaped and we're eating it. <laughs> pork today can be cooked medium rare, okay? So don't worry about it, you know? As long as you have a reputable pork dealer. But come to think of it, my pork dealer is doing a stretch of two to three, so be wary, okay, guys? Okay, we're going to close this down. And I think I should take an opportunity at this moment to eat a little more soup. We'll be back in a minute. This stuff looks fantastic. It's greasy, it's mouth-watering, and it's easy to digest. Mmm. This is gonna be good. I feel so much better already. I was in a world of hurt earlier, but somehow, some. I can smell your soup from the backyard. Really? I can try it. My soup smells. So what like is the this backyard. again? This is a pureed roasted squash, planked squash, and um, vegetable That's really soup. good. Yeah. It is good, isn't it? Would you like to try a piece of our uh, our make you feel good bread? This will it make me feel good. This will make you feel. Even better. <laughs> there you are. This is this is wheat bread, because all the kiddies love wheat bread. Now we've got a director on set named Joshua, and uh, I hear he's feeling kind of ill. How about some Indian pudding? Well, that'd be great. Indian mm. pudding. You know, my, my mother was an Indian. Get it into yeah. your brother. I'm not feeling so. Mm. Mm. Well, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think he feels much better. I can tell by the way he's spewing out his nose. <laughs> Which is why we are red, hot, and ready. The home of smoky good eats.